Let's move on to the next thing. Our main topic of the week is septic system. Septic systems. Um, and in that, we're going to talk mainly about septic tanks. Okay. But there is also the municipal sewer systems as well. So there's, you know, two options in the world as mm-hmm. we see them. Um, could you get into a composting toilet? Sure. Very limited use. Mm, yeah, they don't. They don't work. They don't work great. You know, you have to pour a little the sawdust in and stuff like that, and mm. they can smell. They can be all kinds of issues. So I don't know if I'd consider that a legitimate way yeah. to get rid of the septic material in your mm. home. Okay, the, mm. the 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 stuff that is being produced by you and your family. As far as uh, the septic tank it goes, um, the difference between the septic tank and a municipal sewer is that we're taking the septic waste from our home. Okay, our gray mm-hmm. and black water, right? Mm-hmm. And we're putting it into a uh, storage tank of sorts. Uh, there's three different kinds, basically, and we'll get mm-hmm. into that. And then we need to get rid of it at some point, the, the liquid portion of that, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and uh, the municipal sewer, basically a pipe from your house connects up to the municipal sewer out in the street and then drains and goes out into the, 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 the house. It goes out of the house and goes into the uh, septic system, the municipal septic system or municipal sewer, goes into a water treatment system system right and they're going to either chemically or naturally treat the sewage and then uh, oh they're going to remove all the solids and stuff like that as well <laughs> and then they're going to discharge that either into a ground flow or they're going to discharge like in milwaukee they discharge it on lake michigan you <laughs> yeah. know um but it's after it's treated so yeah. it's not like straight up poo and stuff like that but it is still septic water mm-hmm. or sewage water mm-hmm. you know so yeah it is what it is the whole deep tunnel thing I mean, you can get it that's a whole nother yeah, thing that's a- um but as far as uh the septic tanks go as septic systems go okay there is three basic types okay we have a uh uh a leach field okay uh, we have a, i'm sorry there's three basic types of systems we have a leach field which is mm-hmm. a septic tank leading out to a leach field okay leach mm-hmm. field is where the water goes away and that's going to be flat in your backyard you're not going to see it mm-hmm. okay we also have a mound system a mound system is going to be basically the same thing you have a septic tank leads out to a uh, a dispersion field but that dispersion field is going to be a mound mm-hmm. okay because your soil didn't percolate or test out properly all right that mound system can be 18 grand Mm, yeah, plus, Ish, plus depending on the size. And yeah, a leach field is cheaper. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. about that eight to ten grand. Okay, um, and then uh, the other one you could have, is especially if you're by a uh, uh, a lake or a water source mm-hmm. or anything like that, or near that, you're going to have to have a holding tank, and which is basically just a a bucket in the ground. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. It just it just holds the any any water that goes out of your house, whether it be from showering in the sink in mm-hmm. your toilet, all goes into this tank and sits there until you get it emptied. Usually those people are emptying it. Depends on how much how many people live in the house and mm-hmm. how often you use it. Yeah, if you're taking long showers, it's not going to last very long, yeah. you know. Um, there's no removal of water from it unless you get it pumped. Yep. So it's the same thing you'd have in an RV, you know, that has yeah. one. It's yeah. literally a tank. Yep, just a tank, and uh, usually if you had, let's say, if you had two to three people living in the home, you'd have to get it emptied probably reasonably every two months. Have you met my wife? Well. She takes hour-long showers. Yeah, you'd be hope she's not her. listening. I hope she's not <laughs> listening. <laughs> she has two little girls at home to take care of. She's not listening. Her. She might watch the after show. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> if you take really long showers, that's going to, every gallon of water goes in there, and these are usually 500-gallon tanks. Is your normal size holding tank? Mm-hmm. Can you get them larger? Yes. Um, if you get them larger than five hundred gallons, you may need to have special trucks coming to do your dumping or emptying, uh, because not, your average uh, little dumper honey wagon is going to only hold that, you know, yeah, six hundred to seven hundred gallons. Yeah. The reason that we have the three different types is um, because of sometimes DNR restrictions or environmental mm-hmm. restrictions, but usually oh, it's the difference between a leach bed and a mound system is your soil type mm-hmm. okay so we with a, a leach field that means your, your soil perks out properly means that the water what they do is they dig a hole and they fill and they let it get filled with water and does the water seep uh, through the the soil and go away quickly or does it not if it does then your property is leaching properly and they can do a leach field mm-hmm. but if it doesn't if it just holds the water you have too much clay in your soil you're gonna have to do a mound system where they actually put in sand and gravel and layers of stuff that is going to help you with your um 
dispersion of that water. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and mm-hmm. the uh, the mound system is uh, engineered basically, yep. um, and the water percolates through the mound system before it gets to the regular mm-hmm. soil. Okay, so it's partially treated, mm-hmm. and uh, then it goes through the regular soil. Now, as that goes down through the soil, it all gets cleaned and stuff. We'll have some images of that a little bit later, um, but uh, that's the basics of septic systems Mm -hmm. and the three different types that we have now how does the septic system work so with a septic system okay you have the the inlet okay the inlet is on the the left side of your screen there and that inlet is going to be all that sewage water everything that you put in the toilet everything you put down the sink drain everything um that you uh, comes off you in your shower goes into that inlet and goes into the tank now this is a two-chambered tank not all septic tanks are two-chambered two chambers is better it gets rid of the, the, the sludge better. Um, but uh, it comes into that inlet, goes down into that uh, through the, the pipe there, and the pipe has a stack on it that's going to allow air to get in so the water can move and stuff. Now, once that water goes in there, the water has scum, sludge, and wastewater all in it at the same time. As it goes into that tank and it sits, it separates. And as it separates, okay, um, the sludge, the heavy solids and materials and that kind of stuff is going to go down to the bottom. And the scum layer is going to be anything that would float, like yeah, um, grease and grease, oil toilet, and oil, like toilet how- paper, mm-hmm. you know, anything like, uh, um, you know, baby wipes or anything like that that you put in there that's going to float to the top. And we need to have that t- the, those um, baffles up high enough that that scum is not going to cover the top of it. Okay. And if you put too much scum in, then you have a problem. Bad and, things yeah, happen. Things, bad things happen. Then those yeah. pipes get plugged, and then you have to have somebody come out and make an expensive repair. Mm-hmm. Um, and then generally what happens is as it separates, then that wastewater, the water portion of that is going to move up and into the septic, the, the second chamber of the septic tank. Um, in the second chamber, you still might get a little bit of scum in there, so that's why we have that second baffle there. Still a little bit of sludge in there, not as much as the first one. And then that water then is going to move out to your drain field. Your drain field is going to be your leach field or it's going to be um, your your mound system. Mm -hmm. If this was a holding tank, that last outlet there would not be present. Mm -hmm. That that would be what it would look like, okay? And they basically can go in there and they can empty that all out. In a holding tank, they usually don't even have two chambered holding tanks. They're usually just one big chamber. Yep. Uh, But that's the the basics of a uh, mound system. Um, or of a, a septic tank. This is a septic tank here. This is what one looks like above ground. Okay. And this would be a uh, uh, probably a two-chamber tank, I'm guessing, just based on the, the yeah. size of it and stuff like that. Um, you can see your inlet T there. You have your two concrete anch- concrete uh, tubes coming out that you would normally see in your backyard. Sometimes people bury them. You shouldn't mm-hmm. bury them. You, you, the, I think the, the regulations say yeah. we have to be above soil so many inches, you know. Um, but uh, that's what a septic tank would look like in the uh, uh, in the ground before it goes into the ground. And then this is kind of a picture of how that leach field would work or how that dispersion system. So you can see here's here's your hold, here's your uh, holding tank or your septic tank, okay? And then this goes out, and you can see the inlet pipe is higher than the outlet pipe. This goes out to your leach field, which is all underground. If this was a mound system, there'd be a hump in your backyard, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that's the basics of how that uh, that system works. Um, and then I think I had some other good. So this is a, what a mound system would look like. How it breaks down. You can see the sand and the gravel and all that kind of stuff. It's a it's a really engineered system. They'll be in there in your backyard with an excavator for a while, um, and uh, be moving a lot of soil, bringing in a lot of materials and things like that to create this mound system. And then the pipes go through there with holes in them and allows that so that water to percolate through there. Um, and then this is a picture of how the, the water the water cycle goes, okay? Uh, so the, the production, <laughs> which is, <laughs> I thought that was a funny way us. to put it. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's our stuff. Um, it, it goes into the septic tank. You can see the two baffle chamber here. This is a, a kind of a little bit of a different system than what I just showed you. And then uh, this is a, basically this would be a single chamber. Mm-hmm. It looks like essentially. So it looks like, yeah. Yep. And then your outlet T would come out here, and then you would go out to your dispersion field. The dispersion field then allows that water to slowly seep through the soil. Purification, purification, purification. Water table, come back over here, up here, you drink it. Mm-hmm. Sounds kind of gross. It does. But our soil and the earth does a very, Mother Earth does a great job <laughs> of filtering that water out. So Just don't think about it too long. Just don't think about it for too long <laughs> and know that that distance, the greater that distance is, the more purified the water is going mm-hmm. to be. But... For that reason, it's important to test your water every once in a while. Most people don't. 
Okay, so take a sample of your water, take it in, get it tested, 50, 60 bucks for a water test. Not only are you going to find out hardness and all those other types of things, but you're going to find out nitrates. The nitrates are important because that's making sure that the soil is cleaning your... Yuck, yuck. Your yuck, yuck. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Cleaning your yuck, yuck properly uh, before it's re-entering in your system. If nitrates are too high, that's not good for us. Okay, so like when we go into a home and they're um, getting uh, a home inspection done, we, we don't test the septic system. Well, we put a lot of water. Well, we throw, it. yeah. Yeah, we throw a lot of water through the, those pipes. But... Um, they have a separate a separate inspection that's going to be a well and septic inspection where they're going to take a sample of water and do a, a quick test and do a, a three part test where they're going to test for nitrates, E. coli, bacteria, that kind of stuff, arsenic, you know. Um, and nitrates is one of those because um, it could be an issue, you know. Um, now nitrates usually tends to be more of an issue around uh, like farms and things like that where we have herd animals and that, things like that because they produce a lot of nitrates, <laughs> you know. Uh, but ultimately. Uh, as far as that uh, water seeping down through there, we want to make sure that it's getting clean properly. So getting that test done, usually what? every Well, you have to get your septic tank emptied every two years, right? Mm-hmm. Inspected. So do it every two years. That's a good yeah. bar to hold, all right? Um, so get that uh, water tested every two years just to make sure if you're on a well, okay, to make sure that it's being um, taken care of. If you're on mm-hmm. municipal water, you can go to the municipality's website probably and print out their water test. They do a water test that usually it's bi-monthly or monthly depending on the municipality. Yeah, I think they have to send it to you yearly too. You usually get a, yeah, I get a letter in the mail every year. Yeah. And I'm up and I'm on city water. Yeah, so, yeah. And yeah. they just talk talk about the different cleanliness and, and the, how, what the hardness is, all that kind of stuff they mm-hmm. get into in that water report. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, very comprehensive. But that's going to be tested regularly. When you have a well system, the only way it gets tested is yeah. by you doing it. There's no requirement from your municipality or anything like that that you get your well tested um, but it is a great idea okay mm-hmm. to make sure your water is safe there all right the next part we're going to get into with the septic systems the things that you should be doing to maintain and take care of your septic system a septic system is very expensive they're expensive to fix clean they are. replace all that kind of stuff and they don't last forever people think it's in the ground it should <laughs> last forever. no it doesn't it doesn't last forever it can it can last for a very very long time if you take good care of it and are conscientious about what you um, put down into your septic tank. Um, But it is something that does require a little bit of forethought and learning on the part of your family to know what's appropriate to go down the drain and what's not appropriate to go down the drain. So um, the the things that you should do, okay, is uh, watch for leaks. If you have a leaking faucet, a leaking toilet, anything like that, you're probably putting 700 gallons of water down there um, uh, annually that you're not even aware of, okay, that you're not intending to put down there. So make sure you don't have any leaking toilets, faucets, that kind of stuff, all right? Um, the uh, septic system is intended to use so much water, and if you put too much water down there, then it becomes an issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, it gets overloaded and it can't permeate through the soil like it's supposed to be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Or you uh, you see in the movies somebody gets a soggy backyard because mm-hmm. the poop is overflowing. I was in one of those. Yeah, <laughs> that's never fun. That's never fun. Enzymes and positive bacteria. So in a septic tank, eventually what's going to happen, if, if you go from a dry septic tank to a now being used septic tank, it's going to build up its own bacteria in there that's going to help with the breakdown of wastes and things like that. There are some good enzymes and bacteria that you can use okay, to help that process, but you don't want to do too much of it. If you do too much of it, now you're going to start creating yeast and other types of things that are going to cause a problem. Um, So you want to use the right kind. What I would do is consult with your septic professional that comes out to your home to maintain and take care of your septic system and ask them what they would recommend, okay? Um, Don't just buy what you see on TV, okay? Commercials are intended to make money. They're not intended necessarily to help you. Um, Sometimes they do, but... Not normally. It's normally all about mm-hmm. making money, right? Yep. So uh, talk to your septic professional. They're going to know your system. They're going to know what's appropriate for your system, um, and they'll give you some good solutions on how to better maintain and take care of that system, all right? Um, you want to compost any waste that you would normally put down the drain. So if you would normally at the end of the day, uh, you scrape your plates with the leftover celery, beans, carrots, steak, whatever, you know, don't throw any steak. But... <laughs> You know, if you're if you're scraping your plates into there, all those things that will not dissolve in a glass of water are going to be they're going to turn into sludge at the bottom of your septic mm-hmm. tank. OK, um, don't you if you're in a septic system, don't use uh, baby wipes, don't use uh, flushable wipes. Just use the regular toilet paper. Easy break, easily broke down toilet paper is the best way to go. Um, but uh, most septic tanks can break down your regular toilet paper without mm-hmm. too much of an issue. But if you start getting into some of these wipes and things like that, it can get clogged up screens and things. If the screen gets clogged. 
it could back up your whole system. Yeah. Okay. There's a in each of those baffles that we showed you before. There's a little screen at the bottom. If that gets clogged with a wipe, it could back up your whole system into your house and start flooding your basement and stuff. So definitely something to be conscientious about what you're putting down the drain. If you cannot dissolve, if you put it into a glass of water and it doesn't dissolve in a half hour, you shouldn't be putting it down your drain. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, lots of times when I see uh, people that have uh, mound systems or septic systems, they have a little bucket underneath the sink with a pick and save bag or a grocery store bag mm -hmm. in there. And that's where, they'll, that's where they scrape their plates into and mm -hmm. stuff. And then, you know, every three or four days, they'll send one of the munchkins out to, to dump it on the compost pile out back, dump yep. it in the garden, whatever. Um, if you are a fisher person, fisherman, okay, um, and uh, you want to get some worms, get a little bucket of red worms at the store. Dump them in your compost uh, pile or whatever, or in your compost bin, and then just keep putting your compost in. The next thing you know, you'll have a couple thousand red worms, you know, and they uh, will be uh, ripe. They'll be big, you know, because they've been eating good. So that's one uh, suggestion you should do. And then you should get your septic tank inspected. Um, is it every two years or three years? I think it's three. It depends years. on where you're at. I know, yeah. um, like, South, like Waukesha County, it's every two years. And then as you go north, like Fond du Lac, it's like three. Yeah. So, so um, the state of here in the state of great state of Wisconsin, they will expect you to get your septic tank inspected. Now, mm -hmm. lots of times people think inspecting means emptying. That's not true. No. It's not true. So getting your septic tank inspected is a lot cheaper than getting it emptied and inspected it does not have to be emptied to be inspected um what emptying does is going to dig out all it's going to take out all that sludge it's going to take out all the uh um yeah the the solid waste and all that kind of stuff it's going to clean it out completely so that it's got nothing but water in it okay as long as your septic system is working properly showing no signs of leaking and stuff that inspection takes a lot less time and it's a lot cheaper i mean emptying your septic tank these days probably six to eight hundred bucks to get it emptied and inspected um but just getting it inspected about Two to three hundred bucks, so about half the price. Our our septic tank up north, we've had to have it inspected every three years. We have it inspected. Yeah, and we get a note in the mail from yeah. municipality. Yeah, we get a little card from from the municipality, um, and we've had ours inspected probably three or four times. And we've only had to have it emptied once, and that was because I wanted it emptied because we hadn't had it emptied in like. 12 years. Sure. So definitely um, something to consider when you're looking at your septic tank, but definitely want to get that inspected every three years. All right. Um, now the next thing we're going to get into is things not to real, do real quick. And yeah. I mean, if you want to get it every, it, you know, pumped out every year, you could, if you want to, it's not going to hurt anything. But like you said, you went 12 years because it didn't need to be emptied. So, yeah. You know. I mean, the only thing that I think it might hurt would be that the, 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 bacteria the bacteria that you, yep. takes time to build up, mm -hmm. you know. The next thing is things not to do. Um, so one of the biggest things that I, I, I always tell people not to do, where your leach field is, where your mound system is, is, is not a place to plant trees, bushes, shrubs. <laughs> it's not a place to put a post in for a volleyball net or anything like that. If you damage your leach field, you punch a hole through one of those pipes or anything like that while you're digging or putting an auger through or you drive over it with a car or something, you, sm you, you crush one of those pipes. You're looking at thousands of dollars to repair this thing, okay? If not more than that. It, like, it could be 10... It, you might have to cause full replacement, mm -hmm. depending on what you do, you know? If you yeah. if you go to start digging with an excavator to put a pool over the top of the thing, yeah. and you, oh my gosh, I can only it, 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 well like that distribution box where it goes, you know, uh, distributes into the leach field. If you go through that, <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not good. Then all those pipes day. are going to be broken mm -hmm. and stuff. Absolutely. So no trees, no shrubs, no pools. Don't drive over it. Um, if you're on a septic system, you should not have a garbage disposal. Mm -hmm. Take it out of your house. You should not use it. If you're using the garbage disposal, that means you're grinding up solid waste that's going to go into your septic tank. It's going to sit there, okay? Um, I, get rid of the garbage disposal and buy a, a sink screen. It's a little screen you can put at the bottom of your sink or whatever. We have them on our sinks up north, and it catches any food from what rinsing mm -hmm. off dishes and stuff. Then you grab the screen, you dump it into the compost bucket, you put the screen back in, mm -hmm. bada boom, bada bing. Yep. Not, no solid waste going out to your septic yeah. system. And you is, can peel carrots and potatoes and stuff in your sink. Just make sure the drain stopper's in and then... Throw it in the garbage or yeah. your compost bin. Yep, yep. You should so, never use a garbage disposal yeah. if you're on a septic system. No baby wipes no, no, or no flushable wipes. Um, and then the next thing is um, spreading out your water usage. So mm -hmm. um, in, in all of the uh, areas when we're talking about water usage, laundry 
is something that people do a lot. Oh, of, yeah. Okay. And if you do all of your laundry in one day, you're putting a lot of water down there besides your normal showering and brushing your teeth and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, also, when you're doing laundry, you're putting chemicals into the deceptive system, mm-hmm. which can cause it to freak out a little bit. So spreading that laundry duties out a little bit uh, throughout the week or whatever um, is a good idea. So yeah. spread that out. Avoid using any strong chemicals like bleaches or acids yeah. and things like that. It's going to deteriorate that bacteria. could cause yeast issues and stuff in your septic tank. Um, something definitely to avoid. Uh, try using more natural cleaners like vinegar mm-hmm. and uh, baking soda and other types of natural cleaners that aren't going to um, severely uh, you know, deteriorate the uh, bacteria, but also uh, not cause other types of chemical issues in, yeah. in, in that septic tank. All that stuff is going to sit there unless it's heavier, lighter than water. Well, yeah, I don't know. Some of it is, is the same buoyancy as water, but you still avoid using the chemicals if you're on those types yeah. of systems. Um, the next thing I have is a list of things not to flush. The list of things not to flush. Um, now, the uh, the list of things not to flush is uh, baby. you don't want to flush baby wipes. You don't want to flush excess hair. You don't want to flush coffee grounds, f- food wrappers, disposal diapers, feminine products, kitty litter, paper towel, non-dissolving products, latex products, hazardous materials, paints, stains, curing products, paint thinners, oils. Folks, there's a big list of things you should not flush down your grease. Septic. Grease. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 All of these things are things that will not dissolve in water. It's a good I mean just th- if it's not going to dissolve in water, you should not put it down your septic system. Mm-hmm. It can cause damage to your septic system. It can cause it to get clogged and broken and um, and have issues. So definitely and when even if it makes it through the septic system, gets out to your leach field, if it blocks up your leach field holes, and the water can't percolate out of your leach field, then you're going to have issues and stuff as well. So definitely something to um, avoid, okay? So, something to avoid. And then the, the question always comes up when we're talking about these systems, how long do they last, okay? A leach field generally could last 50 plus years as long as you're being conscientious about what you're putting down that septic system. If you're not being conscientious about it, you're putting all kinds of solid waste and things down there, it's not going to last very long. Is you're mm-hmm. talking maybe 15, 20 years at most. But otherwise, a leach field, um, when well done, um, has good percolation and stuff. It's, it's just going through the soil naturally and whatnot, and it really can last a really, really long time as long as you're not uh, misusing it. Holding tanks, uh, generally 20 to 40 years. They're made of plastic, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as they don't get crushed, um, they should work really well for a long time to come. It's just that they have to be emptied constantly. Yeah. Um, some of the really old ones were steel, you know, and some are fiberglass. Yeah. But, um, all the new ones today, plastic. Even, even septic systems, uh, septic tanks are going to be concrete or mm-hmm. plastic. Yep. You yep. know, um, and those are really the two that have held up over time mm-hmm. to all the chemicals and all that kind of stuff that we use and put down our drains and whatnot. As far as the the life, it varies on how you use your septic system is the, the bottom line, you know. That's and if, if you're, if you're, um, maintaining it and taking care of it and being conscientious about how you're using it it can last a really long time if you're not you can i have been i've been in 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 homes where septic systems are just destroyed after less than you know 10 years because they were just abused people were putting Mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff down them and blocking up their leach field blocking up their mound system and next thing you know they got excavated in their backyard and they're getting charged you know 15 to 20 grand to tear it up and redo it because Mm -hmm. they destroyed it by what they're putting down the toilet this is not like a municipal sewer system where you put whatever down there and downstream it's going to get caught in a filter and they're going to take it out before it goes into the uh the the treatment facility this is not that kind of a situation. Even on a, even on a, se- a municipal sewer, it's not a good idea to put baby wipes and things like that. Mm-hmm. That's going to block up your lateral and whatnot. And then the another part of the septic system that is an important part is tank alarms. Um, tank alarms are going to be if your tank is uh, having a problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, that sludge layer is getting up too high or there's a blockage and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a little float in there that triggers and you hear a buzzer going off in your basement. That's your tank alarm. And it, and you need to get a septic professional out there to take care of that. Don't just silence it. <laughs> yeah, don't just. <laughs> you'll have a problem. When the tank alarm goes off, you probably have maybe five days before you're yeah. starting to have backups into your house and th- issues in your backyard and stuff like don't that. Don't do any laundry. Yeah, yeah. Bad <laughs> get idea. Get somebody out there to. Right Check it out. Right away, yeah. Uh, the septic tank also has pem- pumps in it. It has vents. So when you go out into the backyard when you have a septic system, you see these little pipes sticking up out of the ground. Those are vents to allow the water to flow through the pipes. If we don't have a vent, it's kind of like putting your finger on the top of the straw at McDonald's and the water stays in there, right? Um, when you let the, the, the finger off and air can get in there, that's the vent, and we need to allow that in order for the water to be able to flow properly. And then you're going to have a lateral, and the lateral is the piece of pipe that goes from your house out to your septic tank, but mm-hmm. you also have... Um, a 
uh, other parts of piping and things like that out mm-hmm. there. But the lateral is one thing that you can have inspected. These days, as part of uh, uh, a lot of home inspections, we do... Uh, they do offer, well, this is like the picture. So that's a picture of a guy pumping. So that's their, they basically stick that pipe in. And they're going to pump and empty out your septic tank. Um, but as far as the lateral goes, this is what Mike looks like when he was at an <laughs> inspection, um, <laughs> inspecting a sewer lateral. And these we inspect for not only municipal sewers, but also we can inspect for septic sewer, septic sewer systems as well, inspecting that pipe that goes from the house out to the municipal sewer connection or from the house out to your septic tank. And we can make sure that pipe's in good shape, um, but it is something that is uh, possibly inspected, um, at, but it does usually come at a cost. Um, hiring mm-hmm. us to do it, if we're doing it as part of an inspection or doing it separately, is about 200 bucks. If you hire a uh, uh, plumber, they're like three yeah. to 400 bucks, you know? Um, but definitely um, something to consider. So that is septic tanks, folks. If we did not answer any of the questions that you have about septic tanks, drop it in the comments there, or you can go to our website, thehealthofhomeinspector.com, or helpfulhomeinspector.com, and you can put in your questions there, and we'll talk. We'll make sure to answer those questions for you next week. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, you guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to know when we put out the next one, give me a bell notification. It's a little bell on the bottom right-hand side. And subscribe. Uh, you want to know when I'm coming out with new stuff or whatever, you want to be able to uh, check us out and be alerted to new video content coming your way, um, subscribe button's really the way to go. Thanks again for tuning in, you guys. Remember, the better you take care of your house, better it's going to take care of you. Have a good one.